mean people everywhere, but these are the meanies who got exposed. Welcome to Beyond the Screen, I'm Maddie, and these are the top 10 meanest actors who got exposed by their co-stars. At number 10, James Franco. It's no longer a surprise to anyone that James is a bad dude, but his misdeeds date back to 2005. James and Tyrese Gibson start opposite each other in a 2005 dramatic piece called Annapolis. The story follows Franco's character wanting to attend the titular Naval Academy and entering into a boxing tournament against some of the Navy's best and brightest. His main opponent is Tyrese Gibson. Throughout the majority of filming, James and Tyrese would regularly practice the choreography for the final fight of the film. Now, method acting is one thing when you just pretend to be someone else all the time, but it's different when you're literally punching your co-star for real. Instead of the normal film choreography allowing actors to fake hit each other, Franco was throwing real punches without warning. Gibson tried to be civil at first and asked him to lighten up, but Franco ignored him and continued to box his heart out. When asked about the incident in interviews, Franco defended himself by saying he was aware he made the set difficult at times and claimed to be so wrapped up in his role that he probably wasn't as friendly as he could be. Gibson, however, holds a massive grudge towards Franco, claiming he'd never step foot in the same room as him ever again. Good news for Tyrese, James got cancelled and Fast 11 comes out soon. At number 9, Bill Murray. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was a massive success when it was released, starring Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu as the Angels. The movie was filled with action, a bit of comedy, and one of the strangest performances ever delivered by Crispin Glover. Oh my god, that guy needs help. One interesting addition to the cast was the inclusion of Ghostbusters alumni Bill Murray as the man behind the mic, Bosley. Apparently, the set was anything but a comedy after Bill found out a scene was rewritten without his knowledge. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke about her time on set and the situation surrounding Bill's outburst. Apparently, he was away for a family event when a scene needed to be reshot for the film. Instead of using a stand-in, it was decided that the scene could be filmed without Murray's character being involved, so the scene went on without him. When he returned to find the change was made while he was gone, he was furious. He reportedly shouted at half the crew, including Lucy herself. At first, she wasn't sure why he was aiming his comments at her. She didn't write the scene. She wasn't the director. She asked if Bill was talking to her, which sent him into a full-blown meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior on set, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy is proud for speaking her mind despite being a relatively unknown actress at the time, and is glad that Bill's career seems to have suffered for it, because Lucy was just the first of many celebs to comment on his behavior, but let's save that for another time. At number 8, Jennifer Aniston. In 2010, Elle asked actor Jay Moore to describe his most awkward interaction with a female celebrity. Moore responded with a blind item that involved a certain leading lady who was upset to learn that he would be playing her love interest. This mystery diva reportedly yelled, you've got to be kidding me, right to his face. He then revealed that the behavior that followed led to more regularly, quote, go to my mom's house and cry. Asked if the actress happened to be Aniston, who played his love interest in the 1997 film Picture Perfect, Moore said he will never ever answer that. Well, on his Moore Stories podcast, he did answer that. Moore claimed Aniston pointed right at him on the first day of rehearsal and screamed, six guys they screen test. Six. The one effing guy I hate, that's the guy they hire. This apparently went on the entire day as Aniston kept bad mouthing him to their co-star. Regardless of what really happened on that picture perfect sound stage, Moore has apparently never forgiven Aniston. In 2016, Sports Illustrated asked what was more satisfying, kissing Jen Aniston or firing Tom Cruise's character in Jerry Maguire. Moore answered, without question, firing Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is hotter. At number seven, Jennifer Lopez. The 2020 Super Bowl saw two pop icons taking the stage and making the night about them and not football. Shakira and Jennifer Lopez appeared together. They absolutely slayed and their performance has gone down in history as the most memorable and shimmy filled night in the NFL. Unfortunately, Jennifer did not want to share the stage. Following the show as a part of her Netflix documentary Halftime, it was revealed that she was extremely annoyed at the NFL for forcing her to share the stage when she felt strong enough on her own, literally calling it the worst idea in the world. Her main concern was the fact that herself and Shakira were meant to occupy and share the same amount of stage time as a normal solo act rather than doubling it like she assumed would happen. Solo artists are normally given between 12 and 16 minutes of stage time, with most artists using that time to do a mashup of their most popular songs. In the documentary, a clip revealed that Jennifer yelled at her music director, complaining that she had six effing minutes, 30 seconds per song. Not enough. The worst idea is putting multiple people on the stage. To prove her wrong, one of the 
the most recent performances on the Super Bowl stage saw six major artists share the 12 minute spot. Dr. Dre, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar were all able to make it work and work well, but Jen couldn't even fathom the six minutes she had to perform. At number six, Jared Leto. Jared Leto has been a problematic figure in the world of Hollywood throughout a majority of his career. After first gaining notoriety for portraying the character of Lane Dixon alongside Dennis Quaid and Danny Glover, Leto quickly began building up his acting repertoire with roles in iconic films like Mr. Nobody, Girl Interrupted, and even taking a turn as the clown prince of darkness, the Joker, in the 2016 film The Suicide Squad, which landed him a spot on this list. Jared has always taken method acting to the extreme, losing and gaining weight rapidly over and over again. It was this film in which he may have snapped. While playing the iconic Batman villain, Leto purposefully distanced himself from his fellow actors on set, and reports are that he sent his castmates used adult toys. At one point during filming Captain Boomerang actor Jay Courtney found a live snake in his trailer following a long shooting day. The snake wasn't venomous, but I think we can all agree that's a big ol' nope. In recent years, he's claimed that any gifts sent to his castmates were sent with the intent of joy and excitement and were received as such. I don't know, exposing your fellow actors to your bodily fluids and actual snakes doesn't sound very exciting to me. And number five, Wesley Snipes. Ryan Reynolds is known for many things. He's got his toes dipped into the world of adult beverages, wireless cell phone coverage, and he's even a soccer coach. One of his most iconic roles as an actor is of course Mr. Deadpool himself. However, in 2008, Ryan was a part of a different Marvel movie. As some may know, the original Marvel movie that started this whole live action comics trend was the Blade Trilogy, starring Wesley Snipes as the titular vampire hunter. By the time of the third film of the franchise rolled around, Wesley Snipes was just done with working on set. He hated the way the franchise was turning out and all of his creative suggestions were quickly shut down. His main problem though was the fact that Blade Trinity was written as a straight up comedy movie. The previous entries were dark action movies filled with gore and some pretty stellar fight sequences, so when Van Wilder was cast to be his co-star, he gave up. He famously refused to film several scenes unless he was allowed to keep his shades on, and apparently he was micro-napping during scenes because he just didn't care anymore. Ryan played a big part in his difficulty enjoying the shoot, making it his mission to make Wesley snap. He would constantly do bits, push things too far, just the general Ryan Reynolds chaos that we're used to at this point. At the end of the day, Blade Trinity ended up burying the franchise and was one of the most chaotic and toxic film sets of 2004. At number four, Kiefer Sutherland. The man known for his roles in movies like Lost Boys and Stand By Me has built a nice little place for himself in Hollywood. For a long time, he was starring in the crime drama 24. Many celebrities have made small cameos and recurring roles on the show, but in 2010, Scooby-Doo actor Freddie Prinze Jr. was cast as Agent Cole Ortiz. Despite the massive success of the show, the job left him scarred, admitting that he hated every moment of it. According to Freddie, Kiefer is the most unprofessional dude in the world. Continuing to say that he wasn't talking trash, this was something he would happily say to Kiefer's face, and apparently a ton of his co-stars agree that he makes filming a living nightmare. Following the end of his character's time on the show, he did slow down in the acting world, now limiting himself to voiceover and cameo roles. The odd thing was that while there were some backing up Freddie's story, there were a higher number of defenders for Sutherland claiming the exact opposite experience. Some say he's the most professional man in the world, so if anyone watching this knows Kiefer, weigh in. Are you team Kiefer good or Kiefer bad? At number three, Alyssa Milano. All right, so let's talk about the show Charmed for a moment, a solid series that was on the air for almost 10 years. The series followed three sisters who discovered they were descendants of a line of good female witches and are destined to fight against the forces of evil. Yeah, it was a fun show, however, just because you play sisters on set doesn't mean you're as close in real life. Rose McGowan and Alyssa Milano had a very public altercation that resulted in a little incident on set being shared with the world. Rose claimed that Alyssa threw a fit in front of the crew yelling, they don't pay me enough to do this stuff, only she didn't say stuff. She called Alyssa's behavior appalling, claiming she cried every time the show got renewed for another season because it meant more time on a toxic set. Alyssa never shared her own comments on the situation, confirming what she was being accused of. At number two, Richard Gere. Richard Gere is one of those actors that doesn't really act. Sometimes people just get hired for films because they have the face for it or the style. For Richard Gere, he did not have enough class and moxie to keep a handle on his role in the film The Lords of Flatbush. He was cast to star alongside Rocky himself, Sylvester Stallone, and according to Sly, these two did not get along. Their beef was strong and long lasting throughout production until it finally came to a head when one day Richard was a little too into a scene and 
grabbed Sylvester aggressively by the collar. When Stallone told him to lay off, he laid in instead. The scene was being filmed on Coney Island, and when the actors took a break, they tried to break each other. Stallone was eating a hot dog alone in a car. Sounds peaceful. But suddenly, Richard stormed in to join him with half a chicken dripping in mustard. Despite Sly's warning about the mustard, it dripped all over his pants. In true Rocky fashion, he elbowed Richard in the head and threw him out of the car. The altercation resulted in Richard being fired from the project. Oh no, we have to decide between Richard Gere and Sylvester Stallone. I wonder how quick that decision was. And at number one, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin is a very easy man to spot. Not only is he a solid actor, but he has a very specific face. Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, anyone? Remember that movie? I did not remember that existed until I started writing this script. I will be watching that tonight. Despite his ability to play lovable and cheerful characters, he actually started out as somewhat of a villain. On the second day of filming his more famous part in Kramer vs. Kramer, Dustin decided to improvise a scene where he strikes his co-star Meryl Streep across the face. Let me rephrase that. Dustin Hoffman thought it would be a great idea to strike Meryl Streep. Mamma Mia, that's not okay. Not only was Meryl shocked by the move, but she recalled that Dustin was also trying to use a tactic on her called emotional recall, taunting her about her late partner, John Cazale, and his illness. Those are the meanest actors exposed by their co-stars. Who did we miss? Let us know in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and follow the channel for more daily content. Thank you for stopping beyond the screen. See you next time.